I was going through my YouTube analytics report this morning and as I was doing that, I realized, not for the first time, but I kind of double checked and confirmed that the videos that you love watching the most on my channel are the ones that are more tutorial-like. The ones where I take you through my own steps and own journey of how I do things, whether that is a writing guide, whether that's how I design my marketing campaign plan or my editorial calendar template, all of that stuff, you really like watching. And I get that because I also love watching tutorials on YouTube because I go to YouTube to learn stuff, not just to entertain myself, which I do that too but I really do a lot of searching and learning on YouTube as well and I understand that you also come to my channel for that purpose too so with that realization this morning I just on a whim decided to film my strategic blog writing guide which I remember that I had promised to share a while ago and there was actually quite a lot of interest on this topic so today's topic is going to be my strategic blog writing guide and what I'm going to do is basically do a screen share I'm gonna to move to my computer now and I already have the document. I've been using this document for many years actually, probably since 2016. Although some hyperlinks do need some updates here and there, the document is still pretty up to date and relevant and I still use this document to share with my writers and when I'm working with clients, again, this is the document, this is the writing guideline that I walk them through when I'm kind of getting them on board with how they should uh, think about their blog post, how they should think about the writing on the website in general and yeah this is what we're gonna do today okay we have the new setup ready and to be honest I am just going to go ahead and share my Google document with you through the screen share and I don't know if this is the right thing to do but I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and be transparent with it okay so as you see this is the blog writing guide that I use with my writers as well with my own team and when I'm managing marketing teams this is the writing guideline that I share with them obviously this is not the ultimate information that they have from me to work on a blog post this is the main guide that they should refer to when I want them to understand how we're gonna work on it so the number one thing you're gonna start with obviously is the goal why does this piece exists. Any blog post in the world should cover one or more of the following values that I have over here and you need to know which one you're going for so that you can better outline your blog post. So show your readers and your potential customers you're knowledgeable and you're trustworthy. So here we're talking about thought leadership and the brand voice and all of that. Number two that you could have is that you want to encourage your readers to delve deeper into your site for more information. So you you want them to spend more time on your site, you want them to read more information, you want them to educate themselves through the content that you have on your website and eventually obviously to move your visitors further down your sales funnel which is a third goal that you could have potentially for any given content. So the next phase is planning and here you're going to start with defining your buyer personas and this is crucial for me and this is a step that you should never ever skip um, because this tells you what kind of person do you want reading your content. So if you have multiple audiences or different segments within your audience, which one are you specifically writing this piece of content for and who do you want uh, reading your content? The best way to get a deep understanding of your audience is obviously by creating your buyer personas. So here I have two examples from my own audience a majority of my audience consists of marketing students and the other majority the other part consists of young professionals looking to either start a career in marketing or switch their career from another industry to marketing those trying to improve their skills to become better marketers so these are my main audience segments I'd say and I do have more detailed buyer persona documentation on my personas so I highly recommend that you also work on your buyer personas you really get to know them you understand where they consume their information you understand what they consume as information and you really outline your content you really plan your content with that information in your mind the next thing is 
creating a keyword list based on your buyer personas common search terms. So what exactly is your audience searching for? Here I want you to aim for long tail keywords within your niche and then deep dive. So here are the steps that you would take to create your keyword list. Number one, and write down your topics, the general topic buckets that you'd like to focus on. So some general topic buckets for me could be digital marketing, digital marketing career, learning digital marketing, marketing career, digital marketing courses, uh, working remotely. And next thing is that you have to fill in your topic buckets with more keywords and Think of uh, how your buyer persona is doing their search. So below I have a couple of examples. Uh, how to start a digital marketing career. So they wouldn't necessarily go to Google and write digital marketing career because search results would be very, very broad and the likelihood of them finding the exact content that they are searching for is going to be quite difficult. I guess a good way to think about this is Think about how you are searching for your topic of interest when you go onto any search engine, whether that is YouTube or whether that is Pinterest or Google. Do you just simply ask for a digital marketing career or do you actually search for how to start a digital marketing career or do you even specify it even further and say, for example, how to start a digital marketing career with no experience. A couple of other examples here are how to get a job in digital marketing, how to create a CV for a digital marketing job. Uh, maybe you could even extend this to how to create a CV for a digital marketing job using Canva. The next step that you would take is you go ahead and research related search terms. So you don't only look at the search term that you have already uh, worked on and figured out, but you also look at the related searches section on Google or YouTube or whichever search engine you're using at this point. Also take a look at Google's suggestions as you type. So you know how Google uses the autofill function to uh, bring up some suggestions as you start typing your search term. Uh, I want you to look at Google's suggestions as you're typing because they show what people are already searching for around that topic uh, on that search platform. I want you to also search for your keywords in YouTube and look at what other people are searching for on YouTube using your target keywords because YouTube is also a very, very powerful search engine and the search terms and the autofill and the suggestions that come up on YouTube have been significantly helpful for me when I am creating my, my content. And then following these steps, I want you to also take advantage of tools like Moz Keyword Explorer or Ubersuggest.io to identify related topics and look at the related topic suggestions that these tools also provide. Uh, next step is checking for a mix of the head terms and long tail keywords in each bucket. And then once you're done with that, go ahead and see how your competitors are ranking for these keywords. And I want you to check if they already have published content on the topic that you are thinking of writing. And if they do, then how else can you add more value to your content so that you can differentiate your content from their available content already ranking for the keywords that you're thinking of. And finally, you can also use Google AdWords Key Planner or HubSpot's Keywords app to cut down your keywords list. So let's now move on to the last step of planning, which is identifying which type of content your buyer personas like the best. So here I want you to keep in mind, number one, what are your buyer personas searching for on Google and the piece that we just talked about kind of covers that section. Number two thing I want you to keep in mind is what is exactly the intent behind these searches? And this one I want you to dwell on and think about for a moment. It's really, really important that you understand why your buyer persona is searching for those terms in that way. So really try to understand the motivation behind that specific search. My friend Daniela from Findable Digital Marketing, she, she's an SEO expert and I love reading Reading her blog post and she has a content that I really love and refer to when I'm talking about the intent behind searches. She talks about two different buyer intents uh, where one is the do-it-yourself model and the other is do-it-for-me model. And what this means basically is if I take an example from my own content or my own ideas over here, uh, how to create a CV for a digital marketing job. So if someone is searching for how to create a CV for a digital marketing job, they are the DIY model 
uh, buyers for me. So they want to learn how they can create a CV for themselves uh, using or referring to a tutorial, referring to a content that I have so that they can follow the steps that I provide and they can do it for themselves. The second type of buyer is the do it for me one. So here, instead of searching for how to create a CV, one could, for example, and I'm just making this example up as I'm talking to you guys, is one could search for a digital marketing career consultant uh, for CV or something of that sort. And as I'm explaining this to you, you should get the idea that the intent behind the two search terms are really different because one is looking for a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create a CV, whereas the other one is looking for a digital marketing consultant or a career consultant which could help them write that CV for them. I think that was a very long-winded answer, but you get the idea. Next uh, thing I want you to keep in mind is what problems are they trying to solve? Again, really connected to the intent behind the search, which type of content makes them stop, click, and consume. So where do they really spend their time and where do they search for uh, that type of information? Is it a social media platform? Is it a forum? Is it LinkedIn? Is it YouTube? Is it Pinterest? You you have to understand your buyer personas to understand everything else that is attached to that. The final phase of my blog writing guide is the preparation and writing itself. So ideally the preparation for a blog post should look like this. Number one, you decide on the main keyword. After going through your planning phase and after doing a lot of keyword research, you come up with the main keyword for that specific content that you are planning to write. Uh, this is going to be crucial to optimize your posts for the readers and the search engines, obviously, which is the master of everything. Second step is identifying the ideal customer or persona. And as I'm going through the document, I understand that it might confuse you uh, because it feels like I've repeated the same thing within the planning phase. And then here again, in the preparation and writing, I'm also talking about main keywords and ideal customers. But the main difference is that in planning, it's for your whole blog and it's for your whole content strategy. Here, this is specifically talking about that specific content that that you are going to write about. Next up is writing the title and copy. Here we get into the nitty gritty of the actual blog post writing. And the first thing you have to do is write the title. It's the most important part of the post and it's the first thing that you should really tackle because it is the first thing that people see on Google when they see your content. They are going to decide whether or not they wanna read based on the title. So it is the hook that gets people reading and clicking through to your content, to your website. So uh, tackle your title first. And ideally the title should be less than 67 characters. Try to use words like best and top in your title. So do some research on title best practices so that you have a better idea on how you can write attractive, engaging titles for your articles. Next thing is make sure to include the keywords in your title and preferably towards the beginning. Another thing you need to pay attention to is to use your keywords throughout the copy and most importantly in the following areas, you have to naturally kind of sprinkle it through the body copy. You have to use it in the first header in the blog, uh, ideally placed after or around the second paragraph and then the first and last paragraph of your blog. So the introduction and the conclusion, make sure to include your keywords. The second thing you need to tackle with the writing is your meta description. The meta description is the second thing that is going to appear that people are going to see uh, on Google when your content appears as one of the search results. So you have to tackle this as a second thing after your title. You want to do more research on what is a good meta description and some best practices for writing meta descriptions. There is a ton of content out there. Ideally, you should keep them within 160 to 165 characters for best use. The next piece I share with my writers is some tactics for writing in an engaging way. So uh, this is obviously not a very comprehensive list. The list could really, really go on for pages and pages. 
But here are a couple of examples that I share with my team and to also get you thinking is use questions to attract interest in your content. Take advantage of the H2 headings in your content and explain the benefit that your readers are going to get by reading that specific section. So always think of your content in this format. The goal for the title is to get people to read the first sentence of the content. The goal for the first sentence is to get people to read the second sentence, the first section to read the second section, and so on and so forth. So make sure to use those headings as an opportunity to uh, intrigue your reader and to share what value they're going to get by reading that section so they continue reading your content. Another tactic I'd like to share is using the agree, promise, and provide to structure your article. And what this means is that you start with a statement that your readers agree with, then you promise them some value and you provide them with that value. Next one is links. And here I have two tactics for you. Try to use internal and external links whenever possible within your copy. Internal links means your linking to your own content and external links means basically you're linking to other people's content and when you do that you can always do a shout out to them on social media or you can uh, send them an email and say you've mentioned them um, in your blog post so do this whenever possible within your copy the other thing is using inbound links is going to help you to keep the readers longer on your website so if I am giving you information on my strategic writing guide and if I have some something else that I think is going to be really helpful for you. I will link that within this blog post that I have on the website. Ideally, my intention there is to get you to continue reading and get you to continue spending more time on my site. The next thing is the CTA and I want you to always keep in mind the CTA of the blog post when you are choosing your keyword, but then when you're also writing your blog post, you're going to adopt the CTA of the blog post depending on which of the three goal options your post serves the best but I want you to always and always have a CTA for every blog post that you write it is an opportunity that you should not really uh, miss out on but also when you are thinking of your CTA make sure that you're not being very pushy and make sure that if the content that you're putting out there is more so of a top of the funnel educational type of piece you're not being really pushy and salesy with your CTA if that makes sense um, this is all about the buyer's journey and the sales funnel and all of that and I think I am going to make a video that is going to go in depth on that topic so that's that for the CTA here um, the next and final thing I want to talk about is styling and here I want you to use headers so h1 h2 h3 to structure your article and this is going to be very important for SEO and this is obviously not the only thing that's related to SEO everything I've so far mentioned in this video and, and have in this writing guide is all about SEO basically so use the headers and the final thing is using bold and italic when needed and when it looks okay to use within your blog post so that is all basically that is all of the information I have for uh, my writing guide and again I want to maybe emphasize that this is not like the ultimate way to write a blog post this is the basics of how any writer should think about and the fundamentals every writer should know when they are going to write uh, content for a blog that was a lot of information guys I hope you took some notes because that was some quite valuable stuff there. If you watched the video till the end, I know you liked it. So please go ahead and support this video and this channel by clicking that like button for me. And if you're not subscribed already, please go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this one. And one more thing, don't forget to leave a comment and let me know if you've taken anything from this video and what was the most important lesson. If you enjoyed this video, if you'd like to have more tutorials like this one on the channel, let me know and I will see you in the next video. Take care guys, bye bye.